Now, women who've been affected by increases to the state pension age are owed compensation. According to a new Ombudsman report out this morning, they found that the Department of Work and Pensions had failed to adequately communicate the changes long enough in advance, leaving many women destitute. Joining me right now to discuss this is Becky O'Connor. She's Director of Public Affairs at Pension B. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Um, look, this has been ongoing a very long time. When I say the, the WASPy women are those who basically led this campaign, and they are the Women Against State Pension Inequality, known as the WASPy women. They say millions of women suffered financially because they didn't get sufficient warning to prepare for the change in the pension age. We've got this Ombudsman report basically backing them and saying they do deserve compensation. But let's roll it back a little bit. When was this pension change announced and, and how did it affect people and how many did it affect? So it came with the Pensions Act of 1995. Um, the change actually took place in 2010. So there, you know, there was some lead time there. The estimated number of women been affected is around 3.8 million and according to this ombudsman report um the amount of compensation is well around ten thousand pounds so um per, per, the, woman. <laughs> per woman affected yeah. now you know we don't know the, the the full details of how that's going to play out yet because the actual investigation by the ombudsman has been going on for several years now they have, have already published some findings back in 2021 this is kind of like the final ruling that we've, we've been waiting for looking for the compensation details yeah. and they have said that they actually don't want to just put this to the dwp because they don't think the dwp is going to follow what they have recommended in the report so they're putting it straight before parliament now but basically, it's been going on for many years. The campaign has been going on for many years. So has the investigation. And we've reached a conclusion, mm -hmm. but we haven't actually got, got money position. into the pockets of those women the who the Ombudsman says has been affected. The key thing here, I've always wondered why there hasn't been a campaign by men to say we'd like to be compensated for the fact that we had to work five years longer than women for decades, uh, retiring at uh, 65 instead of 60. Um, why have they not been compensated? No one's offering to do that. And that was clearly unfair, and it was unclear for, unfair to far more people for far longer. It was obvious to me that in anyone you, that it was unfair for women to retire earlier. It was a European... Uh, uh, court that said, you know, this is unequal, it has to be changed. There was no choice about that. It had to happen. And then, of course, the government's decision to raise pension age from 65 for both men and women to 66 meant that a particular group of women born in a certain few years in the 50s were hit by the six-year, you know, hit change in one go. Clearly, that was a big change. Now, their argument is that we didn't know about this in advance, even though these changes were made, they announced well in advance. Now, they were announced in budgets, they were announced in the newspapers. I remember, you know, I remember, you know, writing about these things, reading about these things. Uh, it was well known. There is an argument that, you know, a lot of people don't pay attention to the news, what happens in Parliament, and they weren't aware. But a lot of these women are saying, look, you know, I wasn't, wor I, I wasn't working, or I was in very low paid work. The pension was going to be, I could work at or I was a carer. And I was going to basically eke out my money until until my pension age, and 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 therefore I, I and then it it was six years longer. But most of the women in this age group would have been able to carry on working just as men carry on working. So why, what do they need to be compensated for? Um, well, for some women who were already working, who had some private pension provision. The, the increase in the age from 60 to 65, you know, they weren't too worried about it. They were fine because they were planning on continuing to work anyway. It's those women who had given up work, who had a certain expectation that they were going to receive the, the state pension at 60, um, who maybe would have struggled to get back into work for whatever reason. Maybe they were yeah. still caring. Maybe they just weren't able to retrain. Um, these are the women who have suffered the most and have had to use food banks and so on. But you you are correct. There are there are some women who weren't affected who would have carried on anyway. And with regards to the equality between men and women, I mean, yes, in theory, completely fine that we should retire at the same age. But it was this transition period mm. that is in question. And I think, you know, it was 15 years notice enough for people to make up the shortfall? Yes, of course Depending on your was. income. Possibly but, not. But, but the thing I find fascinating is women I've got, I've argued with quite a few of the women from the WASPI campaign over the years on there and uh, and uh, on Twitter. Um, and they'll say, no, we weren't given notice, we didn't know. But we were doing our pension and our retirement planning. I'm thinking, you were doing planning and at no point thought to double check. By the way, this was still in the age of the internet. It's not like it was sitting in the library and you had to go to the library to find this information to check 
what age retirement age was. A simple Google would have made them go, oh, hold on a minute, I don't think I do retire at 60. I think it's 65 or 66. I, I'm sure there are probably a couple of 100,000 women who were in dire financial straits, who were working as carers, doing fantastic work, which, by the way, unpaid work, which the state would otherwise have to pay for, who will need some help and should have been given help at the time. Um, and all, 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 you know, absolutely support that. But the idea that the vast majority of women who are affected by this are in any way harder hit than all of the men who worked for five years longer, who probably many of them, many years, never actually got to actually claim their pension because they were still working when they died at 65. Um, I think they've got, a, they've got a better claim than these women have, haven't they? So the state pension age for women was the same between 1948 to 2010. It was 60. So women grew up just with that assumption. Now, the ombudsman has said that, you know, these women should have been written to individually rather than having to pick up the news from the news. Um, as you say, it was publicised. There was mention of it several times. But clearly that information did not filter through or did not filter through with people then actually able to consider the implications for them individually yeah. and then they might have been aware of it but think but that's got nothing to do with me because i'm not thinking of retiring right now completely and there may have been a bit of dissonance there there may have just been you know genuinely complete lack of understanding um, and you know sometimes we are expected with things like you know our tax bills to know ourselves yeah. what we should be doing and how we should be planning our tax finances and so on. Um, and in this case, that logic was applied to changes to the state pension, but it didn't filter through, which is what the Ombudsman has found. Um, there was a lack of accurate, adequate and timely communication. Now, yeah. would a letter in the post have changed anything? You know, perhaps some was, would still have been in the same position had that letter well, been that's, received. That's my but the point is, we it, won't know. I do, I mean, I do want the, one of the biggest problems we do have is actually that most people don't make plans for their, 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 their pension years. They don't know many details about it. Most people are under some um, complete illusion about what they're entitled to, how much they need to pay and what sort of pension pot they, they need. Um, and we often talk about you know, gold-plated, you know, even state sector pensions. I mean, you know, if, certainly for people who, who've uh, still got rent to pay, if they haven't bought, been lucky enough to buy their own home and a mortgage that's paid off, you know, it's not going to even cover people's rent. A lot of people have no idea about their, their financial planning. Oh, you're so right. So the state pension, most people do rely on it for the majority of their pension income when they retire. It's, you know, probably not enough to rely on, particularly if you have housing costs, as you say. Um, and private pension provision is, is necessary in order to get us up to at least a moderate living standard when we retire. But there is this issue with personal responsibility and understanding that our retirement savings now more than ever are our own responsibility. Um, you know, we don't have defined benefit schemes to the degree that we used to have that were fairly generous and paid a, an income based on final salary. Those are falling by the wayside. Um, and the state pension age is likely to rise further. We already have a fairly unsustainable state pension system, Indeed. which means more than ever, it's on us as individuals. Absolutely. Becky O'Connor from Pensions B, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Hope you come on the show again. Still with me is Philip Ingram. Um, Philip, look, I mean, as she said, you know, the pension age is probably going to change again. I mean, the reality is, when the pension age was originally set at, at 60 for, 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 for men, it, it was, that was actually around the age that people mostly lived to. Yep. Very, you know, very few people actually claimed it. Now people... Are, I see, I know people who are retiring in their 50s, they're expecting to live another 40 years. It's unsustainable. Yeah, completely. And you know, th there's a few things in there that we, I think we need to correct. 15 years worth of notice, it was more than that because it takes time to debate this through Parliament, so that will have been plastered all over the Most people don't follow debates in Parliament well, uh, in their and, and, and They've got live. But, but, if you're working as a carer but, but for the, someone, the, you're not spending time exactly, looking but at the, that. The news will be putting lots of stuff out there and, and a lack of understanding when it comes to this is, is an apathy with that your people, I think, need to realise that you do have to look at what you're doing for the future mm. and start to put some planning into it and yeah. not just expect it well, to be... Well, when people say they're pension planning, my thing is you clearly weren't doing any planning it was just a shock to you because you yeah. weren't doing any planning but again they could have done the department of work and pensions should have done and could have done more either way to inform people the amount of, God, the amount of letters you get about nonsense you get more notices about a a, a, a package being delivered from yeah. from you know from from you know, yeah. fedex or anybody else than you get about things like this so maybe there does need to be more information but again i don't think most women affected the whole point was women were supposed to be affected they were supposed to carry on working and not be retired they were supposed to be... A, that was the point I, of the yeah, policy. I, I remember the debates they at shouldn't the time, have... and there were, there were lots of debates. Yeah.